Hi, here is Marc Dubois from Harotech. I am presenting a video on the Haro UT library that was developed by Harotech. The Haro UT library is a LabVIEW toolkit to develop applications for ultrasonic phase arrays. The Haro UT toolkit can be downloaded and installed for free from National Instruments LabVIEW Tools Network. In this video, I am showing how to create a simple LabVIEW VI that displays a sectorial scan using the Haro UT library and a Olympus Focus PX. First, I create a new VI. Then I insert an intensity graph that's going to be used to display the scan plot. Now I'm creating control for the parameters of the scan acquisition. The start time, the duration of the acquisition, signal gains, and a, I use the play button to start the acquisition and the media stop button to stop the acquisition and a stop button to stop the VI. Now a string indicator is going to be used to provide feedback to the user about what's going on with the application and the focus PX. So now let's switch to the block diagram. I have to go to the Haro UT palette, which is in the add-ons sub palette, Haro Tech, Haro UT, Hardware Libraries, and Olympus Library and select programming some palette. And here I select the function open focus PX. So this function is going to start the Aero UT server. That server is the communication layer between LabVIEW and the focus PX. The server communicates with the LabVIEW application using user events. So I have to create an event structure that's going to contain the code for each of the possible events. So first a Y loop and then the event structure. The first events to be coded here are the events associated with the user controls. When the user changes a control value, the event structure executes the corresponding case that should call the required arrow UT function. So here I use quick drop to call the set start time function from the arrow UT library for when the user changes the start value and then the set range time function for changes in the duration value the set group gain function for the gain control, the start acquisition for the play button, the stop acquisition for the media stop button, and then the close focus PX function. When the user clicks the stop button to stop the VI, in which case the while loop is also terminated. There are two types of event coming from the Focus PX, information events and data events. The information events provide the application with information from the Focus PX. An information event comes with two pieces of data, the information event name and some data that is specific for each information type. The event name is connected to a case structure that is going to run the specific code associated with that type of information event. Right-clicking the case structure and selecting Add Case for every value gives the list of all the information events available. The first event to occur is server connection. So when the server connects, we're going to let the user know by using the status string that the server is connected. And then we're going to request uh, the list of the focus PX that are connected to the server by calling the function get list of focus PX. The server responds to the request for the list of focus PX by another information event, list of focus PX. The list of focus PX comes as an array of string that is extracted from the data event using the corresponding function. In the present case, I know that there is only one focus PX that is present, so I'm just going to use the first element of the array to request connection to that specific focus PX. And I need to let the user know that the server is attempting to connect to that specific focus PX. The LabVIEW context help window can be used to get a quick description of all functions of the Howard UT library. More information can be obtained by opening the manual by clicking the detail help link.
The server lets the application know that the Focus PX has connected to a Focus PX connection information event. Here, I let the user know that the Focus PX is connected. and also set the repetition rate to 10 Hz, which could be a user changeable parameter, but in the present case, it's not necessary. Text message information event is simply some text sent from the server to provide some information to the application. Here, it is simply passed to the status string to inform the user. There is also a server error information event. Specific code can be run based on the error code provided, but in the present case, we simply pass the information to the user. Now I just make sure that the information in the status indicator is maintained from one iteration of the while loop to the other. Now it's time to handle the data event. The data is passed to the application as an array of ASCAN objects. There is an arrow UT function that's going to take as an input the ASCAN array and create an ASCAN. Go into the Hour UT subpalette and then the ASCAN data subpalette, select the function, which is outside the video here, in it from ASCAN. The newly created scan object can then be passed to the scan plot function, which output is connected to the intensity graph. A reference to the intensity graph needs also to be passed to the scan plot so that the data of the scan plot is properly formatted. To make the indication in the scan plot more visible, a rainbow palette is used, copied from the arrow UT example at the color table of the intensity graph. Now what's left is to upload the proper ultrasonic delays to the focus PX. A button is created that when clicked opens the calculator user interface. A case is added to the event structure. Where the calculator function is called. A phase array group is added to the focus PX by calling the function add PA group with the desired focal loss. The output of the calculator function is transformed into focal loss using the function create focal loss. After adding the phase array group, the excitation pulse width can be set to 100 nanoseconds. Once again, this is a parameter that could be made user changeable. Now I add an event case so that I can call the set rectification mode function so that the A scans are rectified at the focus PX level. I create a control from one of the input of the functions so that I get the correct options for the rectification modes. Now the VI is ready to be used. So we start a VI, the server connects, now it's connecting to the Focus PX, and now the Focus PX is connected. Those steps have been accelerated here and would typically take between 20 and 30 seconds. Let's start the calculator. The parameters of a probe with a flat wedge are loaded. The angular step is changed 1.5 degrees. Then I run the calculations. After the calculations are completed, the delays can be uploaded to the focus PX. Let's set the start and duration parameters of the A scan. Those parameters are in nanoseconds, the gain, the bipolar rectification mode, and let's start the acquisition. I invert the intensity graph, change the scale, 
And when I move the probe, we can see that we have real-time acquisition. I hope that video helped. If you have any question or feedback, you can go to harrotech.com or leave a comment in the comment section of this video. Thank you for watching.